All right, so in this video, we're going to take a look at how to set up a, a really basic um, surround configuration in the Pro Tools I.O. setup. Now, this is assuming that you have a Pro Tools HD authorization, either with or without the Pro Tools HD hardware. Um, you can see in my configuration here, I've got the HD software running, but I'm using a Focusrite Scarlet 18i20 just to show a, um, a more affordable way of uh, working with surround. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do here is to go to our output page in IO Setup. And we're going to set up a new 5.1 path that is going to be the actual physical output path that's going to my... Uh, Scarlet DDA converters and then into my speakers. So I'm going to go ahead and click new path and I will click uh, 151 output path. I like to call this monitors just so I know that this is the last you know the last destination, the last stop here for my uh, for my signal flow. And I'm going to go ahead and click create. And it came up with, uh, you know, here it is, monitors with 5.1 format and the configuration, um, which followed the 5.1 path order that was specified down here. That's not actually the path order that the Scarlet likes to use, which is actually the SMPTE ITU path order. Um, but that's no problem. I can go ahead and just uh, drag these little um, icons around to reconfigure the, uh, the the channel configuration. So I'm going to take the right channel and put it on two. So I'm going to have L, R, C. My LFE is going to go next to that. And then one unique thing about the Scarlet is that it expects to see the surround channels on seven and eight. So I'm actually going to have a gap on five and six, but I don't really care. That's fine. Um, we're not going to actually be paying any attention to this once we configure it here and then move on to our buses. Okay, so there's our monitor output path. It's 5.1. I've configured it so that the channels will make their way to the correct physical outputs on the Scarlet and then go to my speakers. Um, you'll also want to go ahead and set the monitor path um, preference here to that monitors 5.1. Um, and then you'll want to set up an audition path here as well so that when we go to audition things in the clip list and whatnot, um, it's actually going to know where to go. Output metering is fine. I'm not using AFL, PFL. So we are uh, pretty much ready to go. So let's go ahead and move over to the bus page here. And you can see it automatically created for me a 5.1 output bus and mapped it over to our monitor's output. If we flip that guy open, you can also see that all of the sub paths have already been created for me. Now, I don't want all of these. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, and delete this and kind of show you how this would happen from scratch. So we'll delete that path. And I'll say I want a new path. And I'm going to say 5-1. I'm going to call this, believe it or not, 5-1, uh, just to make it really clear. And it's going to auto-create subpaths. So we'll get a bunch that we don't want. But that's okay because it's a lot easier to delete them than it is to um, make them from scratch. So I'll go ahead and hit create. And I'll get 5.1, 5.1 format. There you can see the channels. Note that this channel configuration is always the same. LCR, LSRS, LFE. But it will correctly map to the output path that we created, which is using that other standard. That's fine. You don't have to worry about that. That's one of the cool things about the IO setup in Pro Tools. Okay, so now let's go in and look at these subpaths. And I can see there's a lot of stuff in here that I don't really want. Um, I'm not going to want a quad uh, subpath. So we'll get rid of that. Um, there's a 5.0, uh, which, you know, is fine. Um, you know, that, that could be useful for us, but I'm going to get rid of that one too. We'll leave LCR for left, center, right. We'll leave stereo in here, left and right. Um, I'm not going to use discrete left, but I am going to use discrete center, so I'll keep that. I'm not going to use discrete right or the discrete surrounds. 
and I'm not going to have a dedicated LFE channel. Um, we can get to that through our regular 5.1 channel if we want it. I am going to go ahead and reorder these just because that's my personal preference. So I want center to come up first, and then stereo, and then LCR. So when I'm making my assignments, in my mind, I'm seeing kind of the, the simplest path and then getting gradually more complex. And this is going to be all I really need. Um, when I want things to go into the surrounds, I can pan them into the surrounds using the panner. If I do decide I want some LFE, which I, I probably won't, it's, it's not really something that's necessary with music mixing. Um, in fact, it can be a little bit tricky at times. So um, I'm going to leave it just like this. So now I have, um, again, 5-1 with all of the channels. I have a subpath with just center, a subpath with just stereo, and a subpath with LCR. Okay, so one last thing we're going to do here before we finish up is I'm going to make another bus for myself um, to use uh, for my reverb send and return in the session. So I'm going to go ahead and hit new path again. Uh, it's going to be 5.1, and I'm going to call it reverb. We'll create that. And it automatically created all the subpaths. I, I don't know if I'm going to use any of these. We'll, we'll just leave them for now. And that's pretty much it. Now note that for that reverb, because I know that that bus is just going to be used as an internal mix bus, I'm actually not going to map it over to the outputs, of course. So this is going to go from my individual tracks to my um, aux track that has the reverb plugin on it. Okay, so we're pretty much ready to go here. Um, we'll go ahead and close this up and uh, we'll move on to the next video where I'm gonna show you how you actually route the tracks um, to these various uh, paths and subpaths that we've created. So stay tuned.